Goodness, I miss Texas. All right, so rolling in to the next project. We're gonna do the cat butt. Once again, got our shirt. Now this shirt is uh, Fruit of the Loom HD. This is what I do most of my work on. Okay, the custom colors is stuff that I'm doing here because Shirt Space provides it, but this shirt I really like is the Fruit of the Loom Custom HD Cotton because it's nice, it holds together real well, it takes the dye real well. I haven't had any issues with uh, my pre-wash process and sizing staying in the shirt or anything. So it's really been a nice shirt. And it's longer in the torso for people who like a little bit of a bigger shirt and, but don't want it to like just come up to like look, look goofy where it only comes up like halfway up on your belly. You know, there's some other shirts out there that do that and I've noticed that and you know, as I've gotten a little bit a little better at noticing what people like, you know, we've realized that those shirts just had to go. Had to get some better shirts. So here it is. I use this one. All right. So get this guy all flattened out again. You know, a good indicator of having it flat is making sure that all your seams line up and it looks like it's, you know, as flat as a piece of paper. When, they're both, when both the ply of the fabric is on there. We'll go ahead and do this. Now, here we go. So once again, we're gonna go ahead and find the center of the shirt, pull it in, do the half, then we're gonna draw the cat butt, the heart. Be really cool. I hope by doing these tutorials, I do bring some value to y'all and help y'all sharpen your tools of your tray as we go. All right, this nice and half. All right, so Katie Belmont wants to know about the hot dog water. All right. So hot dog water is kind of like a little cheat code that I use in some of my dye. Um, um, came across it completely by mistake. We were cooking hot dogs one night and my son was joking. He said, hey, you know, you should just use that for uh, mm -hmm. your dye water because it'll save you water and everything, you know, be a little better. So I was like, okay. So, you know, humoring him, I did so. It was, you know... The red saturated a little bit better, and I was just I just couldn't believe it. So I shared it, and everybody just laughs and laughs and laughs. But it works. It, it, it helps uh, dye come into the fabric. It helps with the absorption. We're gonna do a little kitty foot right here. So that's a big part. You don't want it to stick out too much. So, but yeah. So I just add just a little bit to my chem water. Get his cat fat butt. And when I'm mixing some of my reds, and it helps him pop up. So that looks like it's going to be a tall ass cat. I'm a little stump cat. I'm a little stump chonker. Here we go. Let's get that ass out there. There we go. So I just freehand this. God damn. Where am I going to go with this? I just, there we go. I'm going to get it going just a little bit up like this. Alright. So keeping with the outside. Make that a little cleaner. So yeah. Okay, so you asked a question, Ada. Uh, do you rinse the shirt before untying? Do you treat the shirt? Uh, the yes before washing. I don't understand that part, but uh, yeah, I rinse. I hand rinse every shirt. I sit there and I paw over it in cold water. I start my rinse with cold water as my um, uh, hot water and the uh, washing machine fills up and gets the uh, water a little bit soapy. I put some Blue Dawn in there. I use Blue Dawn a lot while I'm rinsing my stuff because it, I know that it helps deactivate the soda ash in there. Look at that, look at that little heart right there. There's a butt. Yeah. So I know that the uh, Dawn helps kind of kill and neutralize the soda ash. So I use a little bit of that while I'm rinsing and then as I as less color comes out, I, you know, get it hotter while I'm rinsing and I throw it into a hot wash, wash it twice in that hot wash, 
and see where I'm at. So I'm pulling from the inside. I want to make sure that I get enough flat space. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself enough flat space to work with because we're going to curve this tail hard. I'm going to show you all a pretty good swerve on it. Y'all excited because this is, this is where you, you probably want to keep an eye on it. I'm going to break this up and put it on YouTube as well. But uh, if you're interested in uh, sending some tips to the tip jar, you can go send something to uh, kaidies at gmail.com at PayPal. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in there. I'm going to throw a nice curve on there and find the direction I want my cat butt to go. And let me see if we curve it like that. Give it a little tip at the end. Now. Right, I'm not even gonna draw around the other end. I'm not gonna do that because if you do that, it's gonna give you two cat. It's gonna give you two tails, two cat butt tails. Who's sending me angry faces? What's going on here? Who? What are you mad at? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a line and I'm gonna kind of map out what I feel like is half of that cat tail, and I'm gonna make that my little line right here. Now that's just going to be half of it, right? Here we go. On all the way down. And we want that to kind of get a nice curve, but mimic the outside of it so where it tapers in and kind of looks like it's going to be a fun little chunk of cat butt. Alright. So first things first, we're going to tie up the heart. So that's going to help secure everything else so we don't have to worry about everything moving. All right, I'm going to do this kind of quick so we can get to the feet. All right, so again, bend that, get a good half on there. I'm going to do these on smaller pleats because I want this to be as much surface area as I can. So we're going to do this nice and small. Could do this a bit slower. You know, take your time to get these lined up. There's no rush. But I'll rush. It's okay. All right, get around that. Use your other fingers to kind of help direct the fabric around and do some of the work for you. You know, learn to control this fabric, you know. Command it. Anybody got any other questions about this also? Like, why cat butts? Like, what the hell? I'm glad you asked. Well, my wonderful partner, Markel, she paints them. And uh, when we came together, I loved her paintings. And then she was just like, do one on a shirt for me. And I was like, okay, I will. And I did. And it's been fun. A lot of people love it. It's, it's a really funny... Thing. And then I found out that there's even Facebook groups just for cat butts. And I didn't even know it was a thing. And when she was showing me this, like, I had seen Bob's Burgers and stuff, but I wasn't very familiar with every single episode. So I, I didn't even remember that being, like, a significant episode. But everybody started saying, oh, my God, it's like Bob's Burgers. But yeah, she does cat butts, and it's freaking hilarious. It's so adorable. So you definitely got to go check out her on Instagram. Um, uh... I think it's Neon Kitty Art on Instagram. I'm not sure. What's up with all this mixed bag of emotions? I'm seeing like cry face, mean face, angry face. I like the hearts. I like the wow faces. Those, those are cool. All right. There we go. Nice and secure. This isn't going anywhere. Go ahead and cut this. Leave a little bit of tail for when I'm untying and rinsing. All right, so the trick is these little clips. I love these things. So I'm just going to make this my crease, and I'm going to clip this every bit around the way. And we're going to go all the way over there, and then by the time I'm done clipping it, it'll be cool. All right. So it's kind of a pain in the ass, but you want to make sure that you're they fold right and you're not getting a bunch of you know spots all folded up so you want to make sure that you kind of separate these two pieces of fabric right here because this is going to get kind of messy right here i like to start 
just as subtly as I can. And I clip it really and give myself like right up on the line as I can be. And as long as I get this little inch wide clip, a nice straight inch of fold, we can curve this thing any which way we want. <laughs> I'm an onion. Right on. Because I've got layers. Yeah. And people don't like you, especially kids. Kids are like, man, onions. Ah! I swear, you've got to, like, dice up onions and, like, melt them into food with a food processor and a motion blender so you can hide that stuff. Because otherwise, they, like, see one onion and they're like, mm, dinner's ruined. I don't want this. I'm done. And it's just like, what? And then, like, ten minutes later, they're like, I'm starving. You never feed me. And it's like, what? Ugh. But, yeah, my daughter hates onions, so it, it just makes me laugh. You gotta be really sneaky with our vegetables. Hype them up. Be like, no, this is so good for your lungs. <laughs> it's got lysine in it. <laughs> you don't want a lysine deficiency. That's bad. All right. So as I'm going, I'm really just getting this nice and folded under. And I'm really, my most importance is just getting one inch of this green line nice and clipped in here with these little file clips or you can find them at you know wherever that you know you get this stuff at we just keep on going keep on going keep like, like I'm trying to push all this fabric underneath there because I want it to be as flat as possible so any wrinkles are on the outside of this line over here because you'll you'll that'll be an issue once we get to tying it I don't want that to be an issue for you so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm trying to smooth this out as I go as well. Uh. Really bums me out you can't have music. Like, unless I know who's giving me consent or something. I don't even know how the music stuff works, but I tell you this is this is not easy without music. Usually I got something playing. Otherwise all I hear is my tinnitus. Bing! All the time in there. Slip some hemp seeds in there. What are you talking about? Goofy. I don't know anything about hemp seeds. It takes a bit of practice, but you can really, you can curve this however you want. I think I'm going to be like trying to figure out some of these other smaller NFT markets and try to get some shirts up on them here soon too. Any of you guys like the crypto stuff that I've been doing here recently? Any crypto fans in here? Let me know. Leave a comment if you're a big fan of crypto. Alright, so this is going to be a tough bend, but I'm just going to use my finger and just kind of mend that and just get that green line as much as possible. Even if it's just for a second, this, this little clip will secure that bad boy. And there's your dip. Learn this week, always buy the dip. How many of you guys are into like uh, stocks and all that? Crypto. Big fan of crypto lately. Last year it was stocks, but... Stocks make me cry too much. Crypto makes me happy. Travis, that dropper is a 2X. I gotta go and skim my list because I'm pretty sure I might have it called for, but again, I might not. Because I like just making the droppers because they're fun. Alright, so when you're done with that, you want to try to push all of this fabric underneath there so that this becomes your new line. So you want to kind of just push all your stuff underneath the rug and you know, hide it, 
and then make sure that all this gives you nice and smooth lines. And we can kind of work on it as we go once we get to time. We can kind of like just kind of pull this apart, separate this, make sure that it's going to be nice, nice and smooth tie for you. Which it looks like it's going to be pretty nice. Pretty nice and smooth. See, like Travis just said, so you like these uh, Fruit of the Loom HDs. Right on. Yeah, they're not too short. And yeah, you don't want your gut hanging out. It sucks. Alright, so I want to make sure that there's like all my lines kind of kind of come together before this cat butt because that kind of displaced a whole bunch of fabric. But since I've got this tied, I can kind of play with it and make sure that I'm on point. All right. All right. So I like to start down here at the bottom and work my way to the top so that all my stuff is over here to the right. So a lot of times when I've got something that's at like a curve, I want to make sure that I get the line perpendicular on the very first fold so that it doesn't get this weird dip or anything. So I don't go angled or anything. And it has this weird like angle on the very first thing. You can kind of mess that up. So I'm going to go as perpendicular as I can on the very first fold and make sure that all these match up. And then I'll start coming around over here. Now, because this is an outside line and we're going to cover a lot of room, I'm going to make these pleats a little bit bigger than I made these. I think this would probably be a good little quarter inch, good little quarter inch pleat. How we look over here? I guess you can't really see it. Here we go. Let the lag on my my feet over there. Okay. I just realized it. Now let's see if you can still see it better. All right. I'm really learning how to do this as I go. So if anybody's got some tips, like hit me up later on and say, hey man, when you do this, it sucks. But when you do this, it's kind of cool. <laughs> I like constructive criticism, you know, three hots and you know, one not. All right, so we're coming up to a corner and like I showed you last week, I like to kind of come into these corners pre-planned. So it looks like this is gonna be about the same pleat height and then I'm gonna be able to come there. So I wanna go ahead and get this pleat kind of going because once I get this right here I want to take the corner of this make sure that both ends meet up and then I'm just going to turn the whole thing and there we go and I just want to kind of maintain that that nice straight path and get as perpendicular as I can before I get going again golly I really wish you could see through my eyes that would really help Alright, let's get around this cat foot because this is a really hard part too. Now as it turns and curves, man, this is weird doing this backwards. I want my hand I hate that my hand is like kind of blocking it. I really want you to see it from my eyes. Get that other pleat and come around and then turn the whole piece as I do that. And then using my fingers. Now this is gonna bunch up a little bit. So I can kind of if I'm I know I'm gonna have a tricky corner, I can kind of loosen up some of these pleats and kind of get this fabric back and make sure that I've got enough room to do what I want to do over here. So that's the trick to the cat foot that I don't think I showed on the tutorial. But where do we go? We're going to go ahead and get around this little edge. Edgy little cat foot. See if we can just pull all this fabric up a little bit. And it makes it so it, it's not so tight. Alright. Come through here and readjust. Get a lot more pressure on there as you go around. See, I got my foot right here, so I know that that's what that is. You can go up around this big old chunk, wavy little line by doing the same thing, just following this line and you know picking your path which way you want. It's going to look like a bunch of crud over here on my left because, well. I really just couldn't get a good shape there, but 
That's how I do it. A little bit free handed most of the time, every time. There's only a couple little things that I've ever made stencils for. But I do uh, plan on making more stencils in the future because that does help. Alright, I'm over here on this side. Okay. All right, so this next part is going to be kind of fun as we get to these clips. Now, I want to make sure that all this fabric's all nice and flat underneath there as we get there, and that we have a pretty even path. Now, you can do this with thicker pleats, and it'd be a little easier, I think. You know, like you get a little more control, you cover a lot more distance. But I just really think that the smaller pleats, like, are just a little bit sharper, you know, whenever you get a good crisp line on there and you don't have any mess ups, it's, it just looks snazzy. I like it. That's just the way I do it. All right, so we're starting to bunch up a little bit here. And I want to make sure that we stay true to our cap butt and what we're doing, our whole mission. All right. There we go. All right, keep this out of the way because this is where it gets hairy. But if you keep it cut like in half, it's it's gonna work. And I'm gonna be uploading this like this time. I'm gonna try to do this in a couple parts, but I'm pretty sure this isn't as long. Yeah, we're only at 45 minutes for this, so we're gonna be doing good on time. Let's pull this out as we come around here, and let's get set up to go into this nice and clean. This is going to be a little transition where it's going to get a little messy as you go. You can kind of work on it, but you just really want it to, you want the cleanest line and you want to push the fabric away from those clips as much as possible. But as you go, you're keeping your line nice and straight. Keep your line nice and straight. Like each time you can try to pull out one of those wrinkles. And then as you go, you unclip these and just toss them aside. There we go. You don't need it anymore once you have your pleat down. So you work each pleat. starting to get a little tougher. Got a ball of fabric over here that I'm going to keep up with my hand and try to just pull this because the bottom of it's in there. So we're going to go ahead and try to get this. This might come out looking like a little bit of a, a little wrinkled tail butt, but it's okay because that's just going to add a little bit of character to it. So as I go, I'm removing clips, trying to keep this nice and straight. Yes, Jewel, I did. I'm fucking stoked. Pardon my mouth, but I'm that stoked. This will be up also on the page for a while. And then I'm going to get it over on YouTube. And I'm going to try to break it down into two different parts. Alright. Alright, we're getting to the end of this tail. Which is freaking awesome because... That's kind of the harder part. You want to make sure that you keep doing this without pulling that out. I have a little, little character on this cat butt tonight. I'm not being as difficult with it as I usually am. Alright, got to the end. Hold that down. Get a nice little turn on that. Alright, that's going to give us a nice little tip to it. Go back and line everything up. Make sure that your line is true as much as you can. Get you a little smash brick thing. Alright. Oh, 
right. Smash it down a little bit. Tap, 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 tap. Make sure you got a little support there. Now get down underneath there. You can kind of push that down. Get your thumb set. Go up to your finger, top finger. Oh man, this is going to be tight. Let's see how this goes. Get all your stuff out of the way. I mean, I should be cleaner. Come look at me. Dreading this. Why my house looks the way it does. So my kids don't watch me do that. All right. There we go. Get underneath there. Kind of pull it just a little bit to kind of see which way your line's going to go. This looks like it's going to get a little flippy floppy because I did really a uh, small pleat. That's okay. We're going to get control of that. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it four times without putting any pressure on it. So I want to give it, I want this all to come together all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and stand up and brace for it. I'm going to take my handy dandy heavy as fuck thing and slam that down. And just push it down as hard as I can, give it a quick test hug, and hopefully that all stayed right where it was. Ugh. I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. And then get to do my camcorder from the top or my GoPros. So I just couldn't figure that out this week. But here we go. We're going to go ahead and resecure our line. Push down, cinch, around. Now it slides right under because I got, I push it down right there, get down to the bottom, and then my other finger, flat surface area, right underneath, and it slides. It just, it looks like magic, but it really is. You get really quick with that, it works. There we go. Want to make sure I carve a nice deep groove in there. Now pushing down and making sure that you've got like even even uh, pleats is what's going to keep this thing from like flipping up and folding up all over the place. So the tighter you get, definitely keep pushing down and just trying to get all that. I want this to be as sharp as the line. I don't want any dye getting up underneath this, which will happen if you let it. All right. Oh. All right, and that's that. So now all I got to do is, you know, scrunch it up, pull the sleeve out, and we're ready to rock. Now, Carrie, it's cool that she tuned in. Earlier she messaged me, and she's like, hey, when I'm doing this with uh, ice, can I, can, I do what, can I tie like you tie and still ice dye? And I was like, yeah. But she was like, man, how do you get the black on there? Well, you're gonna have to do a little bit of both. You know, you can you could do a little. You could put the black powder on there, but the black powder dye will split with ice, and black powder dye is pretty much every pigment kind of thrown in there. Get our sleeves in there. Now, since this is all uneven, we're gonna get this just out there. We don't even care. Get this out there. The more random, the more awesome sleeves inside of one another got these a little bit taller because there's this weird little bundle right over here that always just kind of happens and I just try to pull that out as much as I can mess it up tease it whatever so that it's not the same or similar all right so I did the cat butt and a heart Let's see here we're at 52 minutes Red. I'm going to rebroadcast this on YouTube, and so you'll be able to catch it there. Um, uh, but I think this time I'm going to try to break it down into two different things, like the heart and then the cat butt with the curved tail. Because a lot of this scrunching, you know, you can get really detailed. And when I do my shirts, I really do get in here and try to make, like, every little thing pleat. You can um, uh, open up every little pleat, and you can stuff another thing in there. You can twist it and then pull it up and then stuff stuff underneath there a little bit let it fold down on itself we can like just twist it all up like this and just you know smash it all together we can do a lot of stuff with just some simple techniques to make it look extraordinary so just going the extra mile paying attention to detail will really help anybody who's trying to get back 
All right, so we got a lot of that scrunch there. We're gonna start tightening this down from the top down. Whoa, it zooms in on the mannequin neck somehow? Do anybody else have that? Because I haven't moved the camera at all. If, if I've got some digital ghosts in my phone, I'm going to be pretty pissed off. Kristen, thanks for bringing that up to my attention. Anybody else have any issues with that? No? All right. Well, about nine of y'all in here. I really appreciate you guys all tuning in. Thank you. Um, if anybody donated, I really appreciate you. Um, uh, that really helped us out last week. Um, so if anybody has some questions, you know, feel free to ask them in the comments as after I after this goes, because I'll be able to come back and check stuff. You know, uh, you can ask questions on the YouTube as well, make suggestions. So I'm still trying to learn how to do that as well as I go. And I appreciate all y'all that like and subscribe my stuff. If you haven't, please do. It's Kai Dyes on YouTube. Right. Like I said, this one's just a tie to tie tonight. Next time I'll try to get some dyes out and we'll do some more color theory and blending colors and just having fun with some more stuff. Right, get those support beams in there. Then come across with our you know, support crosses, I guess. However you want to say that. I don't know. I just like to do it. Make it nice and tight. Push it all towards the center and down at the same time. Um, rubber bands just work a lot easier for me. A lot of people use x ray So it's really, all these different techniques are just different things that can help you learn how to do cooler things. Like learning how to curve that cat butt can teach you how to do a few different things. It might give you a little like, oh, I was hoping I could you know, figure a way to around this on this other design or something like that, or even playing with it with the patterns, you know, and finding different ways to curve the fabric and, you know, throw people's eyes off because most people are expecting to see symmetrical stuff when they see a tie dye. A lot of stuff, they're just like, man, how did you, how did you do that on a, on a computer? Did you print that? Like, what's up? It's like, no, nah, you know, it's just, there are ways around everything. Coming up, I'll show you other cool ways that we've come up with to do different you know, just different ties. So, there we go. Last band right here. And then you can also band up the cat butt itself too if you want. But, it, you know, it doesn't matter. The die's gonna run all over it. And it's gonna look cool anyways. So, there we go. Do that up all nice and proper. Get the band right here in the corners to help pull the, uh, make sure that the uh, fabrics don't touch in between the ties. That's another very important thing that I like to do. Get those from the different sides and the different angles all the way up into that channel and then pull it as tight back as you can. And there you go. Now, I'm going to get a marker real quick. I'm going to show you. How you would want to apply dye. Yes, here we go. You can do, do a brown, do a brown cat. Alright. So if I was going to lay dye tonight, I would, you know, do pink for the heart. And then varying shades of brown and gray. You can do different shades of gray. You can do orange. You know, I bet there's a purple cat. Um, that's really weird that some people are having this like weird thing. But I appreciate you letting me know, and uh, I appreciate you all joining me. There's our cat butt. You can do anything you want to on this side. That's cool. This is just two th two different things. Heart, heart inside a cat butt. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you next week. You know, I'll be doing this again.